Hi guys, this is Mike. In this Mudbox tutorial, I'm going to talk about the introduction to Mudbox interface. I'm going to talk about the navigating the viewport, the main menu and the viewport panels, layers, object list, viewport filters, brush settings, scope tools, stamps and stencils, and subdivisions. The interface within Mudbox is pretty straightforward. We have our open area here, which is our viewport, which has allows us to bring in objects and start sculpting on them. In order to navigate around the viewport, what we'll use is the Alt or Option button on our keyboard, plus our left mouse button, and click and drag to rotate around our object. We can also use Alt or Option right click in order to zoom in and out, or Option Alt and middle mouse button in order to pan around our object, left and right and up and down. Now I'm using a Wacom tablet, so it's a little bit different setup. Um, if you do have a mouse, that's fine, but a Wacom tablet is useful because it has pressure sensitivity and it's very useful for adding in some fine details within our sculpt. Now I have this basic head mesh that I brought in just for something to look at and for us to you know move around in. You can get that at the top of the screen. You can go to create mesh and add in your basic head. I'll get to that menu in a second. Now at the top of our screen, at the top of our viewport, we have 3D view, UV view, and image browser. Now 3D view is our view where we'll be doing our sculpting. UV view will give us a map of our mesh. You can see this 2D version of our mesh. And you will need UVs if you're going to be doing any type of painting. Now there is PTEX, which is a UV less workflow. But if you're going to be bringing it into a game environment or another uh, painting program such as Substance, uh, Substance Painter, then you will need a UVs. And we have our image browser, which will bring in images for like, say, our stamps or stencils. Now at the top of the screen, you'll see that we have our main menus. And they're pretty similar to other programs. We have our file to be able to open and save and we'll also be able to send to Maya. If you have Maya, we'll be able to go back and forth seamlessly and import, import UVs and recent files. We have edit, undo, redo, duplicate, uh, grow selection, all the selections, uh, locks uh, selected, freeze are selected. We have set topological axis, which allows us to mirror over our uh, things that we do on one side onto the other side. We also have create menu, which has the mesh. Uh, this will be all the objects, uh, base mesh objects that you want to bring in. They're pretty useful. We have plane, cube, sphere, and a few others. And you can also make your own and put them if you have um, something that you use often, you can put this into this folder and into this menu. We have curves, camera, lights. So we have a view as ver various options that we can bring into our, our viewport. We have mesh, which allows us to add new subdivision levels and go up and down our subdivision levels, as well as retopologize, uh, flip mesh and uh, make symmetrical. We have the ability to patch and fix holes within our, our, um, our mesh if we need to. We have our display, which allows us to hide and show various things within our viewport, such as our grid, our lights. We have our UVs, where we can create new UVs, uh, PTEX, and we also have the ability to extract texture maps. And we have our render. We have our window, which gives us uh, uh, various parts of our window, as well as layers, hotkeys. We can, um, if you notice that if, you, if I go back a little bit, you can see our hotkeys at the right-hand side. And we have our help menu. If you have 
a uh, little bit need for help outside of Mudbox, you'll go to the internet and be able to search our various help uh, files that we have. They're very useful. Now, if you go to your right hand screen, you see we have a few panels. We have our object list. This is the list of all the objects within our scene. We have our various cameras, perspective, top, side, front. Now, if you go to your corner of your viewport, you see this little tumbler box that allows us to go to, say, our front, and you can click these arrows to the right or bottom or top. That's what these cameras are. So let me get this back to our normal perspective. And then we have our lights, our materials, and our head. Now, if I select this, you can see that you can see it's changed colors, so we know it's selected. We can go into our Select Move Tools, go to our Objects, and then we can just click off it so it's not selected anymore. And this gives us uh, an idea of our levels, so what level of subdivisions we're at. Right now, we're on Level 1. And we have our Layers uh, panel, which allows us to sculpt layers upon our base mesh that aren't baked into the into the mesh so if we need to experiment a little bit and do a few different things we know we might need to change or erase we can do that without affecting the the main mesh here that we have which is very useful it's used most of the time and we have our viewport filters when we'll be able to add in, say, ambient occlusion. It gives us a, a kind of an idea of when we're sculpting, we can kind of take a look at, uh, say, the ambient occlusion, occlusion, which allows us to see some, like, dark shadows within the details of our mesh. So I'm going to go back to our object list. Now we'll see down here that we have, like, sort of an attributes panel. It gives you an idea of the size of our brush, the strength, if we want to mirror over on the various uh, different sides, you can see how the, the plane that goes through the object. Uh, we can invert, we have steady stroke, which is sort of like a line that gives us the ability to, if we want to do some fine detail curves, steady stroke is very helpful. And we have a snap to curve, and we can also reset this whole thing if we uh, change some of the options. We want to go back to its default, we can reset that. Now down at the bottom we have our Sculpt Tools, Paint Tools, Curve Tools, Pose Tools, allows us to pose our characters and objects, and our Selection and Move Tools. Now down at the bottom we have our Stamp. So that these are basically images and alphas that we can bring in and that when we sculpt on it, we can kind of stamp in sort of uh, character, uh, excuse me, cracks into our characters if we need to, and little scratches and marks. It's very useful for giving us some detail that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise, or it'd be very difficult to do otherwise with just our basic sculpting tools. And we have our stencil, which is sort of like um, being able to push paint through onto our object. Uh, we have the various fall off for our, our brush, materials, our lighting presets, and our camera bookmarks. Now if I go back to our sculpt tools, you can see that we have our various, various sculpt tools that we have down here. And if I just click on say sculpt, and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit, and I uh, also want to point out that you can see the wireframe. If you want to turn that off, you can just press W on the keyboard to bring that on and off if you want. I'm going to turn it off for a second. And you can see that we have our, our sculpt, and you can see the, the radius of the size of our brush. You can see that right here as well. We can change the radius by going to B on your keyboard and just hold that down and then drag up or down to give us a size of our of our brush. We can also hold down M, which changes the strength of our brush. 
So you can see that affecting on the right hand side. I'll do that again. You can see that number go up and down. That gives us the strength of how hard we want to dig into our, our object or how much it raises up. And now I use, because I've used other sculpting programs, I tend to use also the bracket keys to affect the brush size. And it kind of goes in like uh, increments up and down. So you can do that as well if you're used to another program. Now I'm gonna sculpt a little bit on this, this mesh, just to kind of give you an idea of, uh, I'm not doing anything specific other just experimenting and just de demonstrating how this brush works. Now you can see how it affects the, the mesh and how, you, how faceted it is at this low level. Right now we're just on level one. We don't have any subdivisions on that just yet. But if I want to add in a subdivision, I can go to my mesh, add subdivision level, and you can see that that goes up one. And I'll press W on the keyboard to give you an idea of how that subdivides. So it smooths it out as we move up. So just a, a basic uh, primer on sculpting. You tend to want to do your various um, basic shaping with your, your sculpt. Um, using, say, like the grab tool and just kind of shaping out and let me uh, add in some, increase the size a little bit and shaping your object, just giving it the basic shape of what you want to do. And uh, I don't have symmetry on or anything. I'm just kind of uh, demonstrating a little bit here, but you can move, uh, adjust the object at a low level and then once you're ready to uh, move up a level and do some a little bit more finer detail you can add in the subdivision levels and just go up in a level as you go and you can also go back to a lower subdivision level you're not tied to one subdivision level so you can keep going up in order to go up and down you can use page up and page down in order to go up one subdivision level or up to the next one. So you can go back if you feel like you need a little bit more shape, you can go down to the lowest level and just give it some basic shape and then once you're ready to go back up again, you go up to the next level and start sculpting from there. So it's Mudbox is a really beautiful program in order to use and if you're using Maya, you can move back and forth between those two programs very seamlessly. I put a link in the description to download project files. You can also go to astronomic3d.com to download project files from this tutorial and all the tutorials that I've made so far. Thanks for watching.